Hello everyone, and welcome to the beginning of an exciting series of videos where we embark on the journey to create a fully functional CNC controller enclosure. This project is brought to you by CS Lab, the trusted source for all the components we'll be using. In this series, we're diving deep into the heart of CNC control with a focus on the CS Lab 6-axis digital controller. This powerful controller, coupled with CS Lab's servo system, is the foundation of our CNC setup. Our final system will use four servo drivers and motors, offering us the flexibility to configure it as either a four-axis or three-axis controller, with one axis having the unique feature running two motors in tandem. In this first video, we're laying the groundwork. We're starting with the essentials, exploring the minimum setup required to run the SIM drive servo driver and motors. It's a crucial step in understanding the core components of our CNC system and how they work together seamlessly to bring precision and control to your projects. I have used a lot of different CNC controllers and I can for sure say CS Lab products have the best documentation available online. From the basic how to connect power to the description of every pin and examples of how to connect different variable frequency drives and so on. Actually, you see on background I already connecting wires. Let's stop this for a moment and let's see one fraction of documentation resources I just mentioned. Let's explore where we can find product manuals neatly categorized by product groups. We have manuals for controllers, software, servo products, and more. These manuals come in various languages, and my controller manual contain about 100 pages of valuable information, primarily cover hardware setup, connections, and examples. Inside these manuals, you'll discover detailed explanations of port pinouts and example use case diagrams. Plus, there's additional information about also about power connectors making it easy to understand how to connect power sources. If you're interested in servo drive manuals, you'll find the same organized pattern with clear pinout explanations, images, and a wealth of information. Next, let's find some wiring diagrams explaining how to connect a controller to servo drives. And there you go, we've got it right here. The diagrams are beautifully laid out, with color-coded wires that make it easy to follow. They not only show the physical connections, but also guide you on software configuration. Everything you need is right here, neatly presented for your convenience. Let's connect the 24-volt power supply to the controller. We're using a Meanwell 24V power supply, and here are the steps. Take the cable with the plug and connect the live, or hot and neutral wires to the power supply. Leave the earth, ground wire disconnected for now. From the power supply, connect the 24 volts and ground wires to the controller. Finally, connect the earth wire from the controller directly to the main cable. That's it. You've successfully connected the power supply to the controller. Let's make connecting the servo power supply to the main controller a breeze. We're lucky because all the terminal connections use handy screw terminals. Here's what we'll do. To power up the optically isolated control outputs, we'll need a separate 24 volt source for the main controller and signal ports. This is crucial because without separate sources, the optical isolation won't serve its purpose. Attention in this video, I use same power supply because it is only demonstration and I won't run this setup in real controller. Connect the 24 volt and ground wires to power up the four output signal pins. This setup allows us to later connect a signal cable from the controller to the power supply, enabling us to control the high voltage supply through the controller. Now we'll wire three cables directly from the main power source to the servo power supply. These three wires are for live 220 volts, neutral, and earth. Finally, connect the white wire, which serves as the signal cable to activate the servo power supply. That's it. 
We've successfully connected the servo power supply to the main controller, ensuring safe and efficient operation. Now let's move on to the real fun. Let's connect up the actual servo drive. I also made little chart what shows what connects where. From there, we can see we need to connect four wires from controller step and direction outputs port to the controller. These four wires are responsible carrying signals for stepping pulses and motor direction. As you can see for this, I used white wires. I coded each wire with different number of marker strips to better keep track of them. In real controller, it is recommended to use twisted pair cable to avoid signal problems. Next, we need to connect the CAN signal to configure servo drivers later. This is another really convenient feature because this lets directly communicate each servo drive and all CAN extensions via network cable. And this is connected to the main controller on all times anyway. Now, if we want to use this CAN communication magic, all we need to do is connect three wires, one for CAN high, other for CAN low. For this, I used orange cables. And the third wire is for ground black in my case. The last two wires connected to the control side of servo drive are 24 volt power wires. As usual, red for 24 volt and black for ground. And here are some pictures showing closer view to the connectors. And now the only thing remain to do is connect servo motor main power from power supply to the servo drive. Be sure all things are powered off because the power module contains high capacity capacitors which remain charged after AC power disconnection even for five minutes. When I read the power supply documentation, I found some interesting things. A power module has another cool function, namely, Using a common power supply for many motor drives allows for recovering significant amounts of electrical energy and also the power supply is not that loaded. It's because braking servo motor works like electric generator. The electric energy generated during braking is immediately used by other servo motors. If the energy wasn't used at once is stored in capacitors for later use. Also, six big capacitors works as power filtration, which task is to reduce ripple of motor drive's power voltage. And also, wiring up four motor drives is made easy because there are four different connectors, so it is easy to wire each servo, drive directly to its own power connector, without needing any distribution blocks and so on. As a do-it-yourself guy, I am surprised I do not have to do the encoder and servo motor cable connectors myself. All of them are already with connectors out of the box. Just plug and play. And now let's start the system and make this motor spin. First of wow, it actually works. Second of all, take a listen.
No video sound is removed. This is just amazing how quiet they are. I am used to stepper motors and they can be quiet, but compared to this, steppers are definitely screamers. Please subscribe my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up button to see similar videos in the future.